Hi everyone. So today I will be sharing some insights about the employer's responsibility for compliance by the contractor for engaging contract labor. Now organizations often engage contractors to supply them contract labor. The benefit for this, uh, the benefit of using this practice is that they can adjust to variations in demand and supply of labor very fast and very quickly. They do not need to have people permanently on their roles. And when the demand for their output or for when let's say a client is, when there are lots of clients which, which have given the organization a lot of projects, at that time they can increase the bandwidth and hire more contract labor. And when the demand lessens, they can uh, release them. Okay, now this is possible because there are contractors who supply contract labor on a need basis. Now the law has created certain protections for, uh, for these contract labor. So principal employer, which is actually the organization which is engaging the contract labor to the contractor has obligations to ensure that certain uh, legal compliances are met. One of them, which many people know is under section 21 of the contract labor act where the organization is required to depute a representative to the, uh, at the time of disbursement of wages to the contract labor. Now, if you actually look at the contract labor rules, you will see that at that time, such representative must also ensure that there is compliance with the minimum wages act. So when the contractor is paying the contract labor, it is actually the principal employer's representative checking that everything is happening properly and that minimum wages are paid and that wages are, are dispersed adequately to the contract labor. Now, this is what most people know. However, in practice, when an organization onboards a contractor, they ensure that the contractor is compliant with a number of laws. This is done through a contractor diligence checklist. Now, this checklist contains a list of laws, which is much longer than what the contract labor act says. So it contains a list of laws to which mention which are the compliances that the contractor must be compliant with. Why is this list so long? This list is so long because there are a, a varied set of other laws such as the Provident Funds Act okay, and many other laws which state that the employer needs to ensure that if the contractor doesn't pay, let's say, PF to the contract labor, then the employer, the principal employer of the organization can deduct such amounts of PF from the payment made by the employer to the contractor. And this can be paid to the contract labor directly. And if the employer also fails to do so, the PF commissioner has the power to order payment of this from the employer. And the PF commissioner can also order any other third party who is to pay the employer. Let's say the employer has got a uh, has got a client okay and this client has to pay the employer a certain amount for the services that the employer's organization has rendered now this amount so the pf commissioner can directly go to this client and say that listen this is the amount due from this person from your service provider the, the principal employer towards the pf and he can directly order such amount to be paid to him first okay to the extent it's required for the pf now, this means that when employers engage contractors to provide contract labor, they are at risk of paying the consequences of the contractor's violation, which is why they have to create this long checklist to ensure that contractors are compliant in the past and in the present and on an ongoing basis, okay, with the law applicable to contract labor. I hope you found this useful. Do share your views, your thoughts, what, what you took away from this and any practical challenges that you know of or you face in real life. We'll be happy to know about them and address them in subsequent videos as well. Thank you.